Hey there. So this is going to be a book haul. Actually, I just got done uh, not too long ago with my um, episode seven of the Tavern live stream. I discussed some Celtic lore and legend and I still had some of the setup here, <laughs> some of my tavern setup here. So um, yeah, so I just decided why not just do the book haul on, you know, basically on my little tavern setup. So, all right. But recently I got some books um, that I ordered and I tend to go through uh, just these periods of time, I guess, where I just want to buy up like pretty much every book that catches my interest or attention. Um, <laughs> this is one of those times. Um, part of that's due to the fact that I am now uh, writing a new album, of course, and you know I, you know, always looking for different inspiration. Also writing some uh, short stories as well, and also um, wanting to get to a new installment of The Birthright very soon. So um, on top of music and stories and even just my own personal interest uh, for, you know, my live streams and my forthcoming podcast and now my new blog at Celtic Nations Magazine, uh, there's a lot that, you know, I am going to be writing about. And... Um, what better way to uh, gain some inspiration than, uh, you know, reading uh, more books <laughs> or watching documentaries. But sometimes I just, I don't know, I like watching documentaries, but um, I like, but I love to read too, always have. Um, I have a ton of books um, on my shelves. I have actually some in uh, storage as well because I can't fit them all in here. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but, uh, but yeah, but I, you know, I often, um, sometimes I'll read books all the way through and sometimes I will just kind of uh, page through them and just read bits and pieces that catch my attention. Um, you know, it depends, but um but I decided to do just this uh, this book haul of uh, just some of the books that um, I've gotten uh, to help me with inspiration for my future projects. And uh, here goes. So my working title, I've mentioned this before, but my working title for... Um, my new album, which is based on uh, Tudor England, as well as some of the events that took place uh, prior to the rise of the Tudors, is uh, Wars of the Roses. And Wars of the Roses, um, well, as you can see uh, by the rest of the title, was the fall of the Plantagenets and the rise of the Tudors. And the Plantagenets, they were a very, they, they actually ruled England longer than the Tudors did. A lot of people, when they think of um, British monarchs and, you know, the, you know, the powerful families, the powerful dynasties, they very often think of the Tudors because the Tudors are most often talked about, um, like Henry VIII, um, you know, uh, probably one of the most notable um, as well as um, Elizabeth I, um, and then her sister um, Mary I, or Bloody Mary, as she's often called. Um, you know, th those are, you know, what people typically think of when they, you know, a lot of people would think of if they think of British monarchs. However, the uh, Plantagenets, they were actually um, quite a powerful family, and they ruled England for 300 years and until then they ruled until the wars of the roses and um that was when henry the seventh uh overthrew uh king richard the third and that was the rise of the tudors in short so uh this is a book by uh dan jones um i've watched a couple of his documentaries uh on um on england and uh in England's history. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to reading this because I do enjoy uh, his uh, documentaries and everything. So, all right, so that's one. Now, 
This is uh, the Anne Boleyn Collection 2 by Claire Ridgway. And I've mentioned before, I love Claire Ridgway's work. I love her, um, the, you know, the way she approaches um, her history. Uh, she specializes in Tudor history. And, uh, and I absolutely, I just, I like her approach. Um, I, I've met, I mentioned this before, uh, when I, I think I did, um, a short review or something, or so I, or I mentioned her book. Um, it was, it was after I read, uh, the Anne Boleyn, uh, collection one, the first book I'm reading, uh, the second, uh, book. And, um, and so what I like about her is that she's, not a professional historian. Uh, she's more of a person who took, and it, she basically, she explains it as uh, she had a dream that she was at Anne Boleyn's um, execution and she, um, you know, and she woke up in a cold sweat and was like, I have to know more about this woman. So, and, and I just, I love her approach because she approaches it as somebody who honestly wants to get to the truth of who Anne Boleyn was and, you know, just who uh, the Tudors and the other people in the Boleyn family, just who they really were in general. And uh, she, she's not going for a sensationalism or anything like that, just honest history. You know, and I'm not saying that other historians are only going for sensationalism, but, you know, sometimes I think, you know, they kind of all get into a competition with each other, it seems. And it's, you know, it's like, okay, who can tell the most interesting interpretation of this history or this person? But I do, I love uh, Claire Ridgway's work. And um, if you have an interest in Tudor history, uh, she's definitely one to check out. And I think she also makes the history um, approachable too for people who may not necessarily um, be into reading a history book. So, um, yeah. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, checked out Claire Ridgeway's work, I definitely, uh, recommend it. And of course I'm using this as inspir part of uh, my inspiration for my, uh, Tudor England album and even just anything else that I might think of. So, all right. So there was that. And then, you know, I can't read about Anne Boleyn without reading about her brother, George. Uh, this is also by Claire Ridgway and Claire Cherry, and it's George Boleyn, a tutor, poet, um, courtier, and diplomat. Okay, and I really look forward to reading this too, because George Boleyn was a very interesting character, and he was also um, sadly, um, I believe, falsely executed. So... All right, so this is uh, George, all right? And now, going back even further, we have The Time Traveler's Guide to Medieval England, a handbook for visitors to the 14th century by Ian uh, Mortimer. And I'm looking for, definitely uh, looking forward to reading this. Um, it has lovely, lovely paintings um, in it and the way and, and just kind of paging through it, um, I paged through a little bit of it and it seems to, it, it's basically, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's also good if you're looking for, um, medieval England, uh, presented in kind of like just this very fun, almost, uh, tour guide <laughs> kind of way. Like if you were to time travel back, you'd want this, uh, to be your, guide through the medieval era so that you might survive <laughs> so um but yes i'm looking forward to reading this and um and i think this might be also like a great book for people not only into medieval history but you know maybe people you know someone looking um just based on how you know when i page through it um it just seems to be except like i said i think i'm trying to say that it's it's accessible to i think people that might not necessarily want to, you know, they may not find picking up a history book exciting, let's put it that way. You know, kind of like Claire Ridgway's work. Um, you know, based on what I've seen of this so far, um, it seems to be like it's just, just approachable and, um, you know, welcome to medieval England. And, you know, put in a way that I think might appeal to somebody who, like I said, might not get super excited about picking up a history book. So 
So that is another one that I'm really looking forward to reading. Also this one, um, King Arthur, The True Story by Graham Phillips and Martin Keatman. And this is the truth behind the romance and legends of Excalibur and the Holy Grail and the site of the real Avalon. I actually picked this up at a uh, Goodwill. Um, it's, it's definitely definitely been used but um yeah but you know it's uh you know i'm looking forward to reading it and uh sometimes going to a thrift shop or something like a goodwill or any other thrift shop um you know or some like half price books or something like that um or even look at your uh book nook i mean i know some libraries have that where they sell books for like just dirt cheap so if you're short on cash, but you want to get some uh, new interesting books, those are great, um, great alternatives to shopping at uh, full price bookstores. But yeah, but this is um, King Arthur, the true story. And yes, for 1500 years, King Arthur has remained a mystery. For the first time, King Arthur, the true story, discovers the historical King Arthur, his Camelot, and his final resting place. So this should be pretty cool. I love it. Okay, so my camera ran out of room, and I had to uh, go clear some of it out to make room for uh, this uh, final uh, book in my book haul. This is Alison Weir's... Um, Innocent Trader, a novel of Lady Jane Grey, and Alison Weir also does a lot of research and writing on uh, Tudor history. Um, obviously, this is a novel and not necessarily a history book. However, um, there's a lot of good historical fiction out there, and uh, you can be entertained plus learn from it too. So, and plus, like there, you know, historical fiction. It can also be some good um material for you know just inspiring um a story or a song or anything like that and um the story of um lady jane gray uh well the true story it's uh it's a huge mess <laughs> in a nutshell and very very tragic and um basically uh she was appointed queen uh by her uh her very young uh, cousin king henry the young king um not king henry king edward <laughs> and he was the son of henry the eighth and uh, jane seymour uh but she was um appointed he appointed her queen um should something happen to him and uh basically when when she did become queen it just like everything just unraveled for her so quickly. And, you know, she was uh, tragically um, executed and it, it was just a big mess. But um, yeah, but I do look forward to uh, reading this, um, this book and how Alison Weir um, interprets um, all of the events uh, that um, took place uh, during uh, Queen Jane Grey's um, very, very short reign. So, all right. So that is my book haul. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, yeah, and if um, any of those titles interested you, um, feel free to pick it up. You can get them anywhere from Amazon to, you know, your local bookstore. So, um, yeah, so definitely I look forward to reading this. these. I might even... Um, discuss a couple of them on uh, my uh, upcoming podcast, uh, maybe on my uh, upcoming series on my blog at the um, Celtic Nations magazine website, and even on my bonfires, castles, and time travel website. So, all right, you will see more of these books um, in future works, whether they're, like I said, articles and podcasts or songs and stories. So, all right, hope you enjoyed that. By candlelight. All right, take care.